Joe, you and I have been uh, talking a lot about RoboTaxi because you've got your RoboTaxi model. You've got this idea of a forcing function that we talked about in the past. I think you've said 2,000 vehicles is what you're waiting for because once Tesla has 2,000 RoboTaxis, that is a significant margin um, hit by the second half of next year. And so you're saying that is why that number is what you're looking at. So let's, uh, but things have been updated. We've now seen progress. So what today want to go through all the things we've learned, state of the nation. What do we have now? And I want to see whether or not you think this is right in line with what you've been expecting, faster, slower. Let's take a look. So first, thank you to Nick cruz Patain. Uh, Barzad was asking, I wonder what the relative size is of the geofence in Austin versus what they are doing in Bay Area and California. And this is a good kind of visual depiction. Now, the dip, big difference, of course, is in Austin. This is RoboTaxi where there is a safety monitor, not somebody in the driver's seat. But in California, you have to have a safety driver, a person sitting in the driver's seat, because that is what is required. And in the blue, that is what Waymo is doing. But in the, uh, the outline here, that is pretty big. So they've these are the geofence maps as of today. And um, I created a table here to explain what is happening right now. So it is invite only still, but Elon came out this weekend and said that it's going to be open to the public starting next month. We don't know if that is Austin or if that is Bay Area. He said that we're working to deploy 100 plus vehicles in the Bay Area. So that would be likely the car, the the drive, the supervised drivers. And there's 10 to 20 model wise in operation in Austin. In Austin, it's 80 square miles. They expanded from 42,200 square miles in San Francisco. So much, much bigger. The pricing is a dollar flat fee and a dollar per mile. It is uh, dynamic. It changes at nighttime or if there's less cars available. So right now they launched in San Francisco Bay Area. They launched in Austin, but they have planned expansions in Nevada, Arizona, Florida. And uh, the big news, of course, in just a few days ago, did give Tesla a rideshare license, a permit to be able to offer robo-taxi in all parts of the state. And then in the Bay Area, the rules are still very much that you need supervised operation, just like any new autonomous vehicle vendor must do for the first 55,000 miles. You were the one that uh, took a look at and shared that info. So what's your thinking about the current progress? And we'll go through each of these. Now, when it comes to robotaxi, of course, out there, the debate is very simple. The believers say it's already done. FSD is perfect. It's just a rollout question. And the doubters say it will just never happen. It's all fake news. It's another Musk deception and it's not real. And so for us, you know, from an investor point of view, we have to understand, is it real or not? When does it scale? And when does it scale to an extent that all investors who are reasonable investors have to understand it? Hey, creating these videos is a lot of work. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now let's get back to the video. That's my forcing function. It's around 1800 robo taxis deployed. That would give you a run rate of margin. That is the equivalent of over 5% of free cash flow of 2024 of all of Tesla. So that's massive, right? From there, it just doubles and doubles and doubles. You double your free cash flow and then it's a big, big thing. So are we on track? You know, my theory, my theory is that Tesla will not go deep in one market and try to get 2000 in Austin but will seed it across the nation because however good this thing is, you need a seeding time for each city because you need to show some things to the regional regulators. You need to define drop off and pickup zones. Like there is some manual work to be done for each city that will always take time. And so it's actually smart to go broad fast early. And that's exactly what we are starting to see. And they will go slow, right? Broad, but not deep because you don't want to overstretch it. If you go to a city in Florida or to Brooklyn, you left out Brooklyn. So they're going to New York. They're hiring people there already. And you want to start very slow and see how it goes, tip your toes in the water. But once you hit this critical mass in each market, you can start to scale. And what Elon said now, Texas will approve across the board, across the state, RoboTaxi, and they will open it to the public, which is clearly, I think, related to Austin, not to San Francisco but let's see, open access next month. I think that's Austin. These are important indicators that we are approaching that critical point in time while they're seeding across different states and cities. 
with safety drivers. I'm watching that moment where they drop the safety driver in the first location, which will be Austin. And when Elon says it's open to the public, there can't be too much delay to drop the safety driver because you need to scale. You can't open it to the public and then there are no taxis and everyone has to wait. So, you know, if Elon says next month, maybe it's in two months, who knows, but it's going to be October or something. And then can be not more than two months before they drop the safety driver. And my original prediction was November. So let's see. I think I still think it's going to be November where we see no safety drivers in Austin. And if these two things come together, seeded cities, probably 10 or 12 by then, depending how you count, right? If you stretch it out to San Antonio, are these two cities or not? Bay Area is a two multiple cities or not? But let's say a lot of people covered. And then the first one drops the safety driver and you have real robot taxis driving around. I think this is going to happen this, this year. And this is going to set us up for my inflection point in, my, in May or April next year in a very beautiful way. And it might also pull forward the investor expectations that they're not going to wait until my forcing function. Because forcing function for everyone, forcing function does not mean that's the point where the stock goes up. It's mm -hmm. the point in time where no one has a choice anymore other than running into the stock. So very likely the stock goes up before because no investor wants to wait until it's so obvious that Gary Black buys it. Uh, it's probably going to be- And your forcing function is 1,800 vehicles, right? Yes, around there. Okay. And the reason is, again, if you use 1,800, you get about, what is it, 5%, did you say? 5% of, of free margins, cash flow. All of this free stuff. cash flow yeah. by the next year. And so therefore you it's significant. And so people would say, this is real now because they're actually- Making it happen. Five percent, by the way, people, because five percent mm. is a huge chunk. If you grow, let's say twenty to fifty percent a month, I mean that's insane. That means you're hitting a hundred percent, doubling the entire free cash flow within six to eight months, and that's so obvious at five percent that you have no choice.